cases in Salesforce. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining exactly what it is, how to use it, and why it's really, really useful for keeping your customers happy. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help with Salesforce training or setup, check out the link below. We would love to help. So as you can see here, I'm on my Salesforce system and on the cases area. Now, first and foremost, if you cannot find the cases area, you should hopefully be able to see it on the navigation bar. But if not, go to the three by three dotted button on the far left hand side and just search for cases and select the first option that comes up. And you'll be presented with this cases area. Now, what exactly is cases? Cases in its simplest form is a means of managing things that your customers want you as an organization to do. So there are loads of options and times that we can use cases uh, and we've seen loads of different ways that organizations have used cases in the past and continue to use cases now. For example, we use cases to manage the change requests that we get for, for our clients when they want us to change something in their CRM system. So they'll put in a change request that will then populate in our cases area. We can then manage the case so we can say, okay this is the status of it this is the origin uh, this is the person that put in that change request this is the subject of that particular change request this is the priority and this is the date slash time it was opened and we can see who owns that particular case as well so another example is if you have got a software company hypothetically and there is an issue with the software you might have your um you might have your end user go ahead and submit a problem request or uh, an issue and that would then populate in the cases area one of your customer support team would review that particular issue try and get it resolved as quickly as possible so that is cases in a nutshell like i said there's loads of different options on how you want to look to use cases but i'm now going to go ahead and show you exactly how to manage cases inside of a system so if you want to go ahead and create a new case you need to press the new button in the top right hand corner this will then ask you some basic information Contact name and account name is not necessarily required because it can make it slightly more difficult if you don't have their information of the person that's submitting that particular case in the system already. If you do, it's helpful because then you can go ahead and associate the contact being Nick Boardman and the account being CRM crew, let's say, um, associated with that case. So if you know that Nick Boardman is the client that submitted it and the client works for the business uh, CRM crew, you can go ahead and associate that information. Uh, you can add a web email if you'd like to and then the key information that we want to track down here is the additional information and the description information so we have status i would always set a status as new for a case but i'm going to go through the different options later on in this video we then have case origin so where this particular case has come from if you are using forms you may want to adjust the way that this pick list is presented uh, but if it's via email you can go ahead and select email for example we then have case documentation, if that's ever applicable, if you need to document anything or add a reference to a file. We then have type, so problem, feature request or question. Again, you may look to adjust this, we definitely have, so we've obviously got client change requests as an option here. We then have case reason, so user didn't attend training, complex functionality, existing problem. I think a lot of issues come back to user didn't attend training, but I'm not gonna get into that conversation <laughs> in this video. Um, but you can go ahead and select whatever is relevant or you can go ahead and add additional options if you need to. And then if you'd like to, you can associate a case with an opportunity. Now there are some circumstances where that might be applicable, um, but generally speaking, I think you would be managing cases for clients you've already closed one. But like I said, the option's there if it's applicable. And then we just need to add a subject and description for our case. So this is where you put a subject header of what it kind of relates to and then you need to go into as much detail as possible in the description area. The customer support team need to know exactly what they're dealing with. So go ahead and add a description or as an extensive of a description as you possibly can. So I'm just gonna put example case for the sake of this video and then go ahead and press the save button. So now we've created our new case. What then happens? You're automatically given a case reference number. This is always gonna be a unique reference number. So you can use 1037 to refer back to a particular thing that needs to be done or that particular case. And then you can reference that in Slack channels, in emails, whatever the case may be. We then have the basic contact details of that person that you've associated with the case. So when we selected Nick Boardman as the contact name, that will then populate the contact details as well, makes it, makes it a lot easier to contact them and get information from them if you ever need to. We then have the pipeline. Now this is where we manage the status of our case. 
So a new case comes in, of course it's gonna be new, and the ultimate goal is to get it to closed. But you firstly need to work on the case, so you would then open it, mark status as open. If we then head back to the cases area, you'll be able to see that the status of the example case is now open. We can then click back into 1037 and change it to pending. You may use pending if you're waiting for the client to get back to you about something or you're waiting for your manager to either approve something or answer a question. So then you can go ahead and select pending as the status, head back to the cases area and you can see that 1037 is now updated to pending. Again, we can click into it, go to escalated. Now, of course, no one wants to escalate a case it's going to be bad news if you have had to. So this is obviously escalated to a manager or it's a major issue um, or something that you, you, you can't immediately solve. You may then look to escalate that particular case. And again, if we go back to the case area, you can see that the escalated status and that icon has been presented on the case status here. We can then again click back into 1037 with the ambition of, of course, closing off our case, okay? So that's the end goal. Just before we close off this case, I'm just gonna go into a few more details to mention. We have our feed here where we can obviously see updates about what's going on with this particular case. We can write a post just to share insight if you, there are multiple people managing cases in the Salesforce system. We can log a call and log emails as well. Um, so obviously when you're in communication with the client or whoever it is, then you can go ahead and log information relating to that particular case in here. We also can select the details area and this is again pretty standard inside of Salesforce and you can see all of the relevant information that we typed in at the beginning of this video. But once you have closed off case, mark as current status, that case is then closed. You can see here that that status has now changed. Now this view is showing me every single case, but you can go ahead and change the view to all open cases or my open cases recently viewed. I think the best view is probably gonna be all open cases. I would personally pin that view because then you just see what you need to do. And one final thing that I'm gonna show you is the Kanban view. Now if you go to this display as table view here and change it to display as Kanban, you may find this really, really helpful. So this allows you to view your cases in a Kanban environment. So you can go ahead and drag and drop your various cases into different status options very, very easily. You can then also click into them and you'll be able to see what's going on with that particular case and then click back and you'll be back on the Kanban view. The alternative and final view is the split view. I know this is very popular as well. So you can see all of the different cases on the left-hand side, select one, click into it, and you can see the relevant details of that particular case. But like I said, the end goal is of course to close off a case. So hopefully you are familiar with what a case is, how to manage and use cases inside of Salesforce. If you do have any questions, please drop a comment below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you very soon. Thank you and goodbye.